Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to discuss some small wins in Dragon Age the Veilgar. Now, this game isn't really my favorite, and I know a lot of other people really don't like this game either, but I think there is some small wins to celebrate here. This is a game made by Bioware, published by EA. Now, EA is notorious for including Denuvo in their games, and this was not the case for Veilgard, which I think is incredible because this game can run at like, I have a RTX 4070 graphics card and I can run this at like 150 frames with all graphical settings maxed out. So it performs really well. That is really nice. And uh, I think that all games should go this route. The only thing that was bad about this is he couldn't pre-download the game as obviously whenever there's a game that's releasing without any type of de novo, they usually don't let you download it in advance. So as soon as this game was released, I downloaded and started playing it. So you don't really get an accurate read on if the game's going to be good or not, because also with this game, there wasn't a lot of review copies sent out because I feel like there are certain people that may give a not so pleasant review. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of the reviews that we did see when right before this game released were pretty positive, except for a couple of them. But new, no de novo is a huge step forward for gaming. So I hope that more games take this route going forward because Better performance for PC players is huge. That's one of the biggest benefits of actually having a console is for games like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, another EA published game, that game runs like absolute dog crap on PC because it has de novo and there's some areas that just aren't programmed well to run at all really. So that's a big win. Also, this game, the world looks incredible. Like this is a gorgeous world. The characters kind of look like Pixar mixed with Fortnite, but I must say the world itself is quite gorgeous and a lot of the other locations in game are really nice to look at. The gameplay itself isn't super intense whenever it comes to like the puzzles and just world exploring, but the combat I think is really well done. That is, I think a little win there. Uh, so we got ourselves a skill tree, which includes a bunch of different options here, depending on the class that you choose. I went with the mage here and it has some different spells that you can choose. It also has different passive buffs that you can pick up like faster mana regen uh then you got your skill set one that i really like is this one here bolt volley so when you swing your staff if you press it again when your character is physically swinging the staff it will give you an extra bolt on your staff casting so some pretty interesting choices in the skill tree here as well the combat itself is quite enjoyable too so that is something to uh, i guess make note of this game will inevitably always be compared to Baldur's Gate 3, which came out a year prior. And I think that that's going to bring this game down a little bit because Baldur's Gate 3 showed us what is truly possible. You can see there the mind control, almost like the mind flares. But the character models themselves just kind of look goofy. That is the unfortunate part about this game. So, yeah, I do wish that we got a little bit better looking characters, but the world itself is quite nice looking. But as I said, the combat itself is quite fun. You have your own skill tree here and you can use your teammates to set up different attacks like if i go here with this attack it'll combo with this one which will detonate it and deal a little bit extra damage so you can see that there's a pretty nice flow to the combat i'm playing as a mage so i get a lot of cool spells that allow me to do a lot of area effect control damage and things like that but every character also has a dodge roll which i think is nice it used to be that only the rogues would get a dodge roll and I think that kind of gameplay is a little bit annoying. Dragon's Dogma 2 also did it that way, where only the rogue was able to dodge and the other classes just had to run around. So the combat itself is pretty well done, I think, and uh, definitely a highlight of this game. If they can learn from what they did in this game for maybe their future games, I think that, that would be nice. I do have a bit of worry about Mass Effect 5, however, but it does seem like they're going to keep that series to the roots as much as possible and hopefully learn from the things that they did wrong in uh, Andromeda. I have no idea what happened there, but uh, there are the occasional glitches that pop up in this game. So yeah, just wanted to focus on a few of the highlights of this game since a lot of people are really focusing on the negatives and I think it's best to look at this game from a critical approach. I know there's going to be some people that are upset that I'm talking about the positives, but there are some good things with this game so that is dragon age the veil guard the small wins i hope they learn from what went wrong with this game and potentially make the next if there is a next dragon age game a little bit better but new, no de novo great combat beautiful world few things to enjoy so thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this video please hit the subscribe button below and i'll see you all in the next video